rock top down Parsons Beach. It's not the best kind of a day, it's pretty windy actually. That's why I'm ducking down here behind the wall so you can hear me talking. Anyway, I'm gonna go down and have a fish and uh, hopefully we'll get a few, but I wanna, uh, today I'm gonna be using a burly bag and cockles and pilchards for salmon, salmon trout, and I'll also have a go for some mullet while we're down here. And for the mullet, I'll be using maggots, my own product. Okay, I'll give you a quick peep over the wall. Have a look at the beach. Please excuse the wind, because I haven't got one of them u butte dead cat microphones yet. But anyway, have a look at this and then go get my gear and we'll get down onto the beach, okay? get down onto that beach catch some fish hopefully let's go <laughs> that wind doesn't bother the camera too much check out the surf surprise there isn't any surfies down here oh look there's a sealy just jumped out of the water might get to show you later Did you see him? There he is. He's looking at me. Hey guys, this is the place, this is the spot I've chosen to fish. Just on that inside edge of that sandbar. See that wave breaking? See the waves breaking along the sandbar there? And you've got a nice gutter to the right where the waves are breaking and I'm going to fish on the inside of that sandbar just round the corner you might say that's a good looking little spot should be a few mullet on the inside of this sandbar runs along the edge of the beach there that seal's actually working down there I reckon he's having a good feed of mullet anyway if we're lucky well might be able to pick up a few salmon trout as well. We just have to see how this weather goes. So it's uh, raining a little bit. Hell, the rain doesn't pop me off. The only thing it makes it hard filming. You know, we'll go fishing in all types of weather. Who cares about the weather? Looks great. Let's get me gear ready and start fishing. Okay, first things first, we've got to get the burly bag in the water, so this is my burly bag, in there I've got salmon trout mullet heads from another fishing trip, some bread and some pilchards, that's all, it's not a huge burly bag but it will work, if there's fish there they'll come a running, especially the mullet. Right, that burley is in a, in a fine mesh bag. Cause I don't want too much burley coming out and feeding the fish, just the smell and particles, you might say. I'm gonna put this bag into my much stronger green bag. I'm gonna clip it on with one of these clips, very handy. If 
you want to be safe you could put a half inch on your bag as well but that though that won't come off that's safe I've got that tied to a good length of rope the tide is coming in so oh, I need a good length of rope at the other end of my rope I have I haven't got a stake, I've got a cordial bottle. What I do is dig a hole and I bury the bottle. But let's go get this in the water and I'll, I'll show you how I bury it. Wow, that seal, see that bird? That seal's out here and he's feeding on a school of fish. What's there waiting for me? Oh wow, <laughs> this could be interesting. Them birds are hoping to get the scraps off the seal. I've just seen him thrashing a fish around. Wow. Burley's in the water. Now we'll go get my rods. I'm ready. Got my pilchards in here. Got my shelled cockles in there. Lovely. I like to shell them. Told you why in the last video. I can put blood in there. Save the shells at home for rock fishing. Plus, they're already shelled. I don't have to shell them when I'm fishing. The job's done. Pilchards, right. Done all this before on the other video, but yeah. I like to put two cockles on, a number four hook. Bait holder, number four. There's one. That would be enough, like I said before. But I always like to put a couple on for starters. Go, nice little bait. My pilchard, nice little pillies. All I use is my wanos because, like way Pinga Beach Parsons, there's a lot of salmon trout and the bigger fish. With the small hooks, I can catch both, small and large, providing they're legal, of course. Right, just roll my hook in towards the head, around the bone if possible, the backbone. Bring the hook out like that, and the next hook to what near the tail in towards the head around the backbone, just like that. Then your half hitch, just loop your line, okay? Make that loop, and then put the tail in the loop over the shank of the hook, hold it with your thumb, and pull it tight like before, and just break it off, okay? That part into your burly spring. Oh, the sink is a triple star. Maybe two and a half. Not much over two ounce. Yeah, two and a half maybe. Yeah, my burly spring. Put the pilchard in there. I won't fish without a burly spring. I keep saying that, I know. But hey, you might not watch my other videos. That's that. That's all done. I've, this time I've got a leader leader of 25 pound line tied to that swivel comes down to my reel there it is it's just on the reel there there's the knot joined to my 20 pound braid that's a Albright knot it's a good knot like all knots though make sure you tie them properly right we will begin hopefully get a few salmon trout Hopefully, fishing is never guaranteed. So, I've got also... I've got some mullets burly here too. I've already put the water in there, not too much. You could be careful putting water in burly, I'll go too sloppy. But yeah, that's um, bread, pollard, bran, tuna oil, garlic, curry powder, a couple of other things. But that works really good. 
Let's go fishing! <laughs> Straight away, lovely salmon trout. Probably easy 24 centimetres, 25. <laughs> you beauty. Put my blood in my cockles. Burley's working. Fish were there, obviously, because the seal was there. But Burley's good. Awesome. Weather's gonna go really bad. So it's good to be able to get a few fish before the weather like poos itself. So that tide's coming in. isn't it? Put some nice little hook. When it's raining. I think he gathered that. When you cast out, don't forget to set your drag. You know, just button it off a little bit. You don't know what you're gonna hook. You might hook a real big fish. The fish of a lifetime. You don't want it to snap you off.
definitely got enough of these. Might have a go for some mullets. Very soon. I go get some mullet. Might move down there a little bit. Move where it's a little bit calmer. Take the bag with me. See if we can burly up some mullet. Let's go do that guys. I've definitely got enough of these. <laughs> yeah, I'm really pooped. My back is aching. I'm thirsty. Okay, we're gonna go just down there now, where the channel gets a bit narrower. It's a bit calmer over there. I reckon we'll be able to burly up a few mullets. I brought my bag in, there it is. Still okay. This goes to show, you know, I have said it all the time, burly is just fantastic. I've said it before, burly is as important as your bait. So the more you put into fishing, the more you get out of fishing. It's such good fun. Even when you don't catch any fish, I don't catch fish all the time. It's just nice to get out. Them Pacific gulls have been with me all day. Well, all afternoon. I've been here about two hours, I guess. Whoa. All right. I'll turn this off and we'll move down there. I've still got a little bit of battery left. That's good. It's hanging in. Makes a change. Okay. We're ready to mullet fish. All right. The rig I'm using is a padded Oster rig. Six pound line. Up to a swivel. I've got a small leader of six pound line. Only about four foot long. Joined to my maybe 10 pound braid. Somewhere around there, it's pretty fine though, pretty skinny. Okay, so I'm using I'm using number eight hooks. They're a, they're not a super long shanked hook. I don't actually like them really long, mustard long shanked hooks. I like them not too long, but that's the number eight. Two of them. You can use three if you like. Um, I've got a regular bought burly spring and around a one ounce little star sinker. I make all my sinkers myself. Um, plus I'm using my own product for bait. These are, these are what we call my long life maggots in that like compost stuff but it's like wet and as you know maggots turn into flies when they're wet they can't pupae you know they turn into a pupae that brown thing it's called a chrysalis or a pupae and then they hatch into a fly um, yeah so when they're wet it it delays them doing that so that's good for you fish Anyway, so I'm going to use them. I've taken the cockles out. So I'm going to pour some of the maggots in here. Just like that. I'll put the rest down the top of my waders. And I hope the lid doesn't come off or I'm going to be full of maggots and that won't be good, will it? They're wiggling down my legs. Okay, so when I bait up, I just like, if I was freshwater fishing, I would clip the maggots through the end here, the fat end, not the pointy end. Their nose is actually in the fat end. Excuse the wind. But yeah, the nose, they breathe through the fat end, like there, and they eat through the skinny end. That's the way I would put it on for fresh water. Fishing in the ocean. 
I just stick them on. Doesn't really matter. I reckon when they pop, it creates a bit of burly. Okay. I like to put about, I don't know, five or six maggots on. And the next hook. Maggots are a good bait. They're very good. Hopefully there's some mullets here to be able to show you how good they are. Because when when you use a burly, the fish come around and they compete for everything. They're like seagulls. I reckon fish are like birds of the ocean. Anyway, they compete each other to get all the food. And they don't know a hook's in it. And I in my burly spring. My super duper burly. Lovely. Ready to go. Let's go down there and start fishing. pretty windy so I'm gonna get out of here um, yeah thank you for watching I, I enjoy doing this it's great to get out fishing and yeah I'll take these home I'll fill it them all up I might even smoke some be good might be interesting to do a bit of a video on smoking them yeah I've ended up with 20 I've got one what will go I reckon it'll go 35, the rest under, nice plumpy fish, yeah they're good, so happy, now I've got to walk up that mountain, <laughs> not good, got a lot of tackle to carry back up there, yes, it's been hard fishing actually, okay, when I get to the top, I'll give you a look back down. Actually, I think I gave you a look when I got here. 
but yeah thanks for watching again really enjoy doing it dudes um yeah tight lines yeah if you use a burly bag like this down metro you know off the metro beaches a couple of hours before dark bread with tuna oil will be fine good chance you'll bring a few tommy ruffs around give it a go and make some burly up like i do it's all worth a go you might do really well as you know i live right over here on the flurio well we all live on the flurio but yeah i'm not far from here yeah at least you got to have a look at parsons beach all right bye from me i'll stop raving on try and do something else next time without giving away all my fishing spots <laughs> that's it and I'm down here all on my own it's like a deserted island it's lovely I'm alive. Jesus. I know I'm hot. Well, I'm back where I started, guys. What an epic walk. That's a stunning view, isn't it? Alright, so this weather's going to settle down in about five days. So I'll try and get out and do something else. guys um, tight lines and I think I might do one on smoking I'll smoke some of these and show you how I do 